Richard Krause. When you were writing about someone who is as storied as Elizabeth Taylor, how do you uh, tell what's fact and what's fiction? That's m one of my favorite parts of doing books like this, is actually finding these stories and tracing them back to the source. You know, where did this come from? And oftentimes they come from some column that Hedda Hopper wrote in 1944, and that's where it originates and it gets repeated over and over and over. So my, my job was to, to uh, find the source of these things and to tell a different story. I mean, Elizabeth Taylor's story has been told so many times before. So I wanted to tell something, take a little bit of a, uh, a different perspective on it, tell a fresh take on Elizabeth Taylor. Right, because the book isn't an A to Z kind of look at her life. This book jumps around a little bit and I guess just sort of goes over the highlights as to the events in her life that made her Elizabeth Taylor, the person that we all know and, and, and have read about and, and watched the movies. When you decided to go that way, what was it that sort of pushed you that way? And was it a little tricky for you because it's it's not a conventional biography? No, I, you know, I think everybody can probably recite the husbands and the, the health crises. We all know the basic outlines of the story. What I wanted to do, I wanted to take the camera, I used the, the example of, of uh, the metaphor of taking a camera and moving it in real close so that so we see Elizabeth up close on the set of A Place in the Sun, for example. So we see what they were having for breakfast, you know, what time she got to the set, you know, um, what, how cold the water was when they were shooting that scene. So, I, you know, these details, I mean, the, the, the story is in the details, and that's what I wanted to do. So I found letters, and I found production records, and I found diaries that would give me that kind of detail and that kind of... Um, kind of story and color to really recreate all of her worlds. I have this idea of you sort of sifting through moldy boxes at MGM <laughs> somewhere going through old call time sheets and that sort of thing. Is that kind of what we're doing? Well, you know, it was. When I got George Stevens' papers, his private papers, which he had donated to the Academy Library in Beverly Hills, I was flipping through them, and in the back of the giant file, there was, there was um, an envelope tucked in one of the, uh, the flaps, and I pulled it out, and it says, Elizabeth Taylor, private medical records. Well, you know, you can imagine a historian, you know, wow, look what's here. And, you know, opened it up, and, and, and at one point during Giant, she had gotten sick, and so he wanted to see, is she really sick, or is she playing some games here? So he had requested these records be sent to him. Well, they've been in his files all these years. So those are the moments when you say, like, wow, I've really, I've found something that's going to give me a, uh, a view on this that uh, maybe somebody else hasn't gotten before. Now, when you're doing research for a project like this, do you do the research first and then set out to write it, or is the writing and the research sort of happening simultaneously and the story kind of goes where the research takes you? Mostly I try to get as much research done before, before, before I can actually sit down and write. Though it often happens that, you know, the way the publishing business is, they say, well, let me see, you know, 50 pages of what you've got. So you, you write something up always with the understanding that I might have need to add a few things in later on. And, you know, I'm sometimes still doing research at the very, you know, 11th hour because I've finally gotten that interview that I've been trying for over two years to get. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much done with the manuscript and I've, you know, I've finally, I get a call from somebody and I, I know I can add this in. So, but in general, um, I, it's the research um, that, that comes first and then the writing is the, the grueling last several months right. of it. Yeah, the research drives a project. Yeah. Yeah. What, what was the most surprising thing that you learned about Elizabeth Taylor, because again, you know, when I, when I, it's a doorstopper of a book. It's a big book, and I, and I knew there'd have to be different stories in here, and there just isn't stuff that we've all read before, and as you can see, I've bookmarked a few of them. Um, tell me, then, what surprised you the most? I think how smart she was. Right. You know, we think of Elizabeth Taylor as being sexy and beautiful and glamorous, but she was also so smart. She understood what fame was and what her particular role with, with her own fame needed to be. Um, somebody, said, somebody very, very close to her said to me, you know, she understood that fame was an exchange with the public. You know, it wasn't simply enough to ride on these, these uh, um, magazine covers and these, you know, spreads in photo play. You know, for every, uh, for every bit of publicity, we got a great movie. Um, you know, after all of that hoopla with Richard Burton in Rome, mm -hmm. we got uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? You know, and that's missing today. We don't see that today. Too many of these so-called celebrities today, um, you know, it's, this, it's all about the spotlight. It's about going out so that they'll be on the, the tabloids or the TV shows the next day. With Elizabeth, she understood that there needed to be this exchange if she was really going to have a career that lasted. Well, Richard Krause.